Welcome to this tutorial on how to paint a canopy of oak trees. This particular location is Meridian Road in Tallahassee, Florida. I start by um, some Windsor blue at the top of the painting and then Windsor yellow with a little Windsor blue and then we're going to use some Windsor yellow with some alizarin crimson just join all that together you can here and there add a little bit of clear water to your brush and fuse them all together this is just an underpainting looks um a little bit of a mess at the moment but it um will greatly help so come down to the road This road does have a, a dip in it in the far distance there at the horizon level and then it comes back up again and that's why you see that funny narrow shape at the top but it is distinctive so it was necessary for this location because then people are more likely to recognize where it is so just fuse all those together as I'm doing now then we're laying in a little darker version at the top of the painting and that's Windsor Blue with Alizarin Crimson. Still using a mop type brush, a 22 size on this occasion by Pro Art. I like the Pro Art brushes, they last a long time and they've got uh, various price ranges to suit your pocket. And uh, then using all these same colours to get different shades of green into the painting leaving um, the blue sky up top there for now use it together we will be starting some more detail in the far distance and do remember to like and subscribe because then you'll get notified of future videos and it's all free so once this underpainting is completed always remember it dries a lot lighter and i sometimes use a hair dryer to speed up the process which you can do and then once this is dried we're going to start more detailed painting in the distance and gradually moving forward because we've got on this occasion we've got trees hanging over other trees etc etc it's much easier to start in the far distance so here's the use of hairdryer and now the far distance variations of green and yellow keeping it uh, quite light looks dark but once again dries lighter and um, just fuse all that together just um, a hodgepodge of different colors all coming together and then remember you're wet in wet and at the moment i'm using a number 10 stable pointed brush um, which is um, quite useful at this stage so uh, much smaller than the mop and there will be um, various greens growing along the trunks and the limbs and that's what some of this green that we're laying down is indicating now and it will be more evident as to what it is once we do the dark trunk And you'll see as I do this that at the moment I'm leaving in the, the verge um, as it joins the road. We'll, we'll deal with that later. So now starting to lay in those darker colours of the various trunks and branches in that far distance. So you do um, a lightish colour at first as, as always and then darker version on top wet in wet let it all fuse in together
obviously the furthest away will be the lighter versions as we're doing at the moment. And um, at this stage, you can use an, a number four brush for most of what you're doing. And um, sometimes drop down to something like a number two for some of the really thin branches. And um, I'm painting one of the more prominent forward trees at the moment. And um, at some stage in this demonstration tutorial, you'll see that I paint, um, I paint a tree here and there and you don't see all the video because there's so many trees but you get the idea of me doing one and then I'll switch to some others right now so I've done a fair bit of that one on the right and we've gone across to the left because as I said I want to paint this coming forward all the time so you'll see me switching from the left side to the right side every now and then as we come more and more forward here and there uh, color wise I will now be dropping in into my mixes a little bit of the permanent sap grain which is a brilliant vibrant color and um, it helps with that uh, foliage from the trees and various growth on the trunks and limbs of the trees. So switch back to the other side. And by switching like this as well, although you can use a hairdryer, um, you allow one side to be drying a little bit whilst you paint the other side and go back and forth etc and now I'm using a scraping technique still using a number 10 something like that size at the moment where you've got um, pigment on the brush and not too much water so a little bit dry and um, just scrape the brush on there which is really effective and as we put darker sections on, that, that will look even more effective. So switching to the other side. When I um, paint these various trees, here and there you see I'm leaving gaps on purpose, where I will then use the dry brush technique, etc. to show foliage in, in between. That way it's a much more convincing finished article um, if, if you leave those little gaps here and there. You'll, you'll see when I lay those greens in. Still using a number four at the moment. You can see we've already got the beginnings of that tunnel effect um, taking place. The good thing about painting like this is um, you'll get in the overall effect and hopefully enough that people recognize the location, as I've mentioned. Um, but you don't have to meticulously follow every single uh, branch and twig and so forth, you know. You can just uh, get the general feel for it and make it up a little bit as you go along, you know those different shapes where you want them where you think it's most effective because of painting is what you make of it dry brush technique again and once again do remember to like and subscribe because it's all free all these secrets are being given away for free I wish I had videos like this when I was learning to paint over 40 years ago um, I would have made so much more rapid progress. But technology today 
can be wonderful like this and you have the benefit of it. So I've come down to the uh, verge area where there are little bushes and shrubs and so forth um, as it meets the road and drop those in as I go along. And um, very much using dry brush technique again. You'll see all this will really come together as we get closer and closer and darker and darker, fill various gaps with foliage, etc. It, it's just a gradual process, but it's a fun one to do. And um, instead of having a meticulous shape of, say, a building that you've got to get exactly right, etc., etc., a subject like this is a very good one to be uh, tackling when you're learning transparent watercolour. And you would also see later that um, in this part of the world we have what we call Spanish moss. Um, and I'll show you the technique that I use to create that feel of the Spanish moss. And it is really convincing. So make sure you stay right to the end of this video so that you can see that fantastic technique for Spanish moss. So come forward quite a bit on the left side. And see how much those dark shapes now help bring it all together. And they, they will also help push your eye um, from the outside into the middle and down the road. And that line um, that runs down the road, you'll see it's a nice colour, yellow colour, and that too will help bring you into the painting and down the road. So perspective here is, is important, but a simple one again. One well worth tackling for beginners in transparent watercolour. I've got a, as you see, I've used a few different size brushes at the moment. Using uh, something like uh, eight at the moment. Whatever you have to hand around that size. I've, as you see, I've left um, a few little gaps here and there in this tree that I'm painting now on the right hand side. And fill in those gaps with green. Dry brush technique. You see, um, as I said at the beginning, we wanted to leave some of that blue at the very top. It helps. Dry brush technique going on here. See, you can play around with this one. You can have fun doing this one. So I highly recommend it to people. Then the side of the verge coming into play here. Break it up as much as possible. You see where I'm um, laying some pigment down and then I'm going into another colour and laying that on top of that, wet and wet, fusing it together, scraping, etc, etc. Rather than just one big broad brush stroke of one colour that um, is less convincing, it you want to aim for variation and you'll see a little bit later that verge area will be varied even more now for the road you use a mixture of the winds of blue not very much of that and um, some red um, alizarin crimson or light red etc 
and light in the distance and then it will get darker closest to you once came you can vary that a little bit of wet and wet going on and um, so that um, it's not all one big block of, of color it, it's varied here and there which a road is you know got different markings on it and so forth and um, later on we'll be doing some shadows across there as well from the trees for this part of the process because you want a little bit of accuracy because of the middle road markings and the, the verge area I, I'm using something like a number 10 rather than the big mop brush at this stage and remember that you can dip your brush into water which I did just now and then go into the distance, lay that water down, um, bring it down into the pigment that you have closer to you. Once again, this is something where you can choose which colors you want to use. I have mentioned my colors and they are shown in the description. But um, see what you have available. You know, your basic primary colors. Your blue, your red, your yellow. And mix them up accordingly. See that um, road I'm still painting. It's still wet. So I'm doing a little bit of wet and wet but it has dried off some, so I'm getting convincing road colour. The brush has been dipped in water again, and fusing, fusing it together from the distance. Now I'm laying in some dark, <clears throat> often closest to you it's darker, but there's some shadow coming across, and I've gone to the mop for this. So one big shadow there, <clears throat> then there'll be some more shadows coming across from the trees, like this. And because the overhang is occurring as a canopy, then of course the shadows are going right across. Just break them up, general shapes, leaving a few gaps there and there enough to tell a story and at the verge area in a little while you'll see that i dark, darken here and there in that verge a bit more and i've put in a few more little um, strands of grasses and shrubs there we go using a flat brush this time for this part of the painting it's probably a quarter size something really quite small varied greens mixed up together, wet and wet going on, coming down to the road, same on the other side, varied greens, draped in dry brush technique, wet and wet, varied. So got a closer camera angle here so you can see in a little bit more detail what's going on. There we go. Dry brush, straight and along. Now when we get to that Spanish moss, and what I do is I um, 
use my flat brush um, dip that brush in water make sure it's just clear water <coughs> and then I'll, I'll be um, laying that water down on this thing you'll see Currently painting the road markings, flat brush, nice vibrant yellow. Use whatever strong yellow you've got available. A flat brush on this occasion helps for accuracy. See how that line helps lead you into the painting, into the far distance? Then we got these various markings, cat size, etc. <coughs> coming down the middle of the road. As you get further and further away, they look closer and closer together to help perspective. And here's that dry brush. Um, sorry, the um, the technique of lifting. So we've uh, put water on the brush, clear water. Laid that down and lifted with a tissue and then you got the spanish moss effect i hope you've enjoyed that thanks for watching like and subscribe see you next time